Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Pursuit of Wellness. My name is Kabir Uppal and each week I talk to fitness experts and enthusiasts to extract key information to help us get holistically healthy. On this episode, my guest is Sahil Rajwansh, a very dear friend of mine who's been working out for many years. We chat about his journey as a golf player and how his fitness and nutrition has changed over the years. So for all you enthusiasts out there, this is a must listen episode. The Pursuit of Wellness is a Mancha Media production. You can find out more at manchamedia.com. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Mancha Podcast or find us on any podcast app you use. You can also find us on all social media at Mancha Podcast and me at Kabir Uppal. Before we jump into the episode, I want to give a special sp- mention to our sponsor, Tego. Tego is premium gear for the modern everyday athlete. They create products using emerging materials and textile technology that feel good when you are at your sweatiest best. And I have to say guys, Tego really knows what they're doing. Right now I'm wearing their sweat charge t-shirt, which is a really cool product. It's basically a performance shirt that reveals a message only when you sweat. Personally, I love it because it gives me that extra push to go harder. So whether it's a grueling workout or a long ass flight, check out Tego. You can find out more at tego.fit/tpow. That's t e g o f i t slash t p o w thanks for listening guys welcome to the show sahil thank you brother um thank you for making the time to be with us here today and uh, we've already given our audience a little bit of an introduction about you and uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself in your own words all right so aside from my name which is the obvious <laughs> i'm an art dealer and i'm 20 twen- the no no i'm 30 yes you are oh, so no, you on are the other 30. side of the hill so yeah an art dealer uh educated in finance moved back to india after college in 2015 when i started my firm and yeah trumping through every day Awesome. Basically. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. Um hopefully the intro will tell you a little bit more about Sahil than he has in your in that intro. So, um so tell us a little bit about where it all began for you um in terms of sports and fitness. You know, what we're here to really talk about is your journey in fitness and nutrition. Uh when did you start your journey in sports? Well, my journey in sports was honestly way before my journey in fitness began. Um My parents actually put me into rollerblading when I was really young uh, at a national level. So I was always doing uh, roller skating and rollerblading from the age of 4 until roughly 10. But then since it's not a very popular sport, <laughs> my grandpa has much of a future in <laughs> yeah, it. <laughs> exactly. Doesn't really pay the bills, right? If you yeah. want to actually pursue it. So my grandfather actually convinced uh, my mother to get me into golf which again isn't very big on the physical spectrum which is also a stereotype actually definitely at that time like in the 90s it was a sport which was never associated with fitness by any standard but as the sport progressed in the early 2000s i feel like the entire tiger phenomenon really help boost fitness and the importance of fitness in a sport even such as golf and that's really where slowly i think the first step for fitness being involved in my life began and uh yeah my father also definitely like my father's a massive fitness freak he's been running uh, almost 6 kilometers if not every day every alternate day for the past 40 years of his life and also aside from the running he uh, does weightlifting again for at least 25 years because i definitely like i remember hitting the gym like obviously not going to the gym but just hanging out around with my dad in the gym when my early years and i guess that's really where uh, the spark or the interest in fitness began and uh, i eventually ended up pursuing fitness seriously honestly about 5 years ago i did get a brief stint uh, after college obviously like you know when you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like what the hell happened <laughs> yeah <laughs> then, for a lot of our guests it's been that like you know <laughs> i just looked in the mirror and i was like i need to change yeah, something now but then uh, i wouldn't really call that as an interest in fitness it was more superficial because i was just concerned with what most people are concerned about weight weight loss yeah exactly specifically weight loss i was just like okay need to drop this fat and that's about it but the real interest in fitness began 5 years ago when i moved back to india and genuinely started figuring out how to implement it in my daily life 
Okay. So while you were playing golf, there was some amount of fitness that was involved, but it's not as... At a latter point, yes. Yeah, yeah. So not as popular as like a lot of now um, golfers, you know, have a huge focus on nutrition and fitness. Yeah. And that's what kind I of I mean, you can them. just see the basic body structure of golfers yeah. these days. It's and changed a lot over the years. Tell. Like, yeah. uh, look at the oldies like... Davis Love or Phil Mickelson yeah. back in the day or uh, John Daly who had a uh, pot belly yeah. but still one of the best golfers out there at least driving distance wise and now if you see Jordan Spieth Rory Ricky McElroy, Fowler, all, Ricky Fowler guys, yeah. all these guys are fit as hell yeah. and a large portion of their training also revolves around like you said the nutritional and the physical aspect of the sport which is really important. I mean, a lot of people don't end up thinking that when you see golf, you just think old rich people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's changed immensely yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, even if it hasn't changed, like the perception, what's involved, like the science behind it has really improved. And Tiger definitely like was one of the first few golfers who pushed that era in golf. Uh, like he, if you see him, like I never even expected it. I, I, I'm a massive Tiger fan. And anyone who was involved in golf at that point of time, by default was and you know you see him in photos and you read about how he was involved in fitness and the drills and everything that he used to do and coincidentally our coach also on uh, the junior national team she and the junior uh, assistant coach as well both of them they really emphasized on like shoulder development bicep and tricep development so sports not really like hitting the gym like you would do basic sports by which you do uh it's not like building muscle, but definitely no, toning. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's about using the available muscle, I guess, to the best potential. And also it affects at that age when you're young, the more distance you can get, for example, or whatever extra 5% that you can get can be the difference. Yeah, anything that In pushes any sport, you more. I guess. Absolutely. And uh, that's really where it started. And Tiger was someone who really emphasized on it. And circling back to the point which I was saying, like, I read about him, I've been his fan my entire life, but I got the opportunity to see him in Delhi only five years ago. Yeah. When he came, uh, I think Hero brought him over and he played at my home course, Delhi Golf Club. And I was, throughout the entire round, I was maybe 10, 15 feet behind him and he's massive. He's yeah, it doesn't a, look like it exactly. on TV though. Yeah. Like, you know, when you see it on TV, it's a, it's a different thing. But when you see him in real life, like, yeah, that dude's huge. And that's where you understand where that power and everything comes up. And why there's so much discipline also. You can just immediately tell that he's a guy who does care about the not only the not just the way he looks, but the way I guess the fitness aspect compounds into his performance yeah. in the sport. And that's what has made him one of the best players alive. Absolutely. All these guys that we were just talking about, they are the way they are because of him. So yeah, yeah. they he pushed that movement, as you said. He really pushed exactly. golf into that era where fitness and nutrition mattered, right? Yeah. Um uh, well getting into a little bit about your training, you know, we've uh now discussed fitness and workouts together for you know at least the yes. five years that um, <laughs> yeah. you know we've been really good friends um i want to talk a little bit about you know um you mentioned the motivation that you've got from your dad um the spark really came from seeing him and his dedication to his you know fitness working out and also running um walk us through what your current workout is like and uh, we'll talk a little bit later about you know how that's kind of evolved and how you've dealt with it but what sure. are you doing these days uh well if you ask me uh, on a broader scope, I would say my primary aspect of fitness is weightlifting. That's something that I really, really enjoy. But uh, the general workouts that I do are very dynamic. It's uh, not only like, okay, go to the gym, pump some iron, uh, iron and you're done. It's uh, more about understanding where I want to develop personally and targeting a particular aspect of fitness accordingly. Uh, for example, when I first got into it, obviously, like I hadn't done weightlifting seriously in a few years. <clears throat> so the amount of weight that you can lift obviously is not great. And it's not something where you even feel proud, like, you know, looking at yourself in the gym and you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm benching 10 kilos. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> like so, I made it somewhere. <laughs> exactly. So you can't really be like, oh, yeah, look at me. Yeah. So at that point, you have to excite yourself and you have to focus on certain parts where you can expect to see results and also it motivates you. It's like a vicious cycle, yeah. basically. And I see a lot of people losing interest, uh, even myself initially over the years, like I would say from college onwards till about 25, when I started becoming serious about it, that the reason why I notice that I lose interest is because of the monotony of it. Uh, everyone knows that, okay, you do two muscles, maybe like mix it up, uh, put two muscle groups in a certain day, or, you know, you switch it out and you put in some cardio or... 
I mean, the, there's a plethora of information out yeah. there, especially on the internet with the Instagram and everything, and you get to see the videos. And but what I realized is I like even within the same aspect of fitness, uh, for example, weightlifting. I like dynamism. Yeah. I, li- I like a certain aspect of fluidity. That if I'm feeling that. Uh, I don't want to do chest today yeah. for some reason. Uh, then I know that I can do something else which I need to do, and it will add on to my goals for fitness. Yeah. Instead of just being like, okay, today is chest, so I have to do chest. So you're I, not being so rigid with yourself, but you're also, you know, also surprising your muscles in a way. Exactly. Uh, like the biggest aspect, actually. I, uh, so I did get an online trainer, so to say, for about a year. When, but that too, also after two years of Training lifting, yourself, yeah. exactly, because I find that it's stupid, honestly, in my opinion. If you don't know how to use a certain muscle group, and you just get a fitness instructor, and he's telling you, "Yeah, squeeze that tricep," yeah, you don't know if he's when you don't know you truth, how yeah. to even feel your tricep. Yeah. So it's important that you not only have that experience and understand listening to your body, but it's also important that you trust your body and you can challenge it. Like if you're only going to be able to do your max weight on a certain exercise, it's going to be two to three kilos. And again, a lot of people say, yeah, I can do a bicep curl with 10 kilos, but you see them swinging their arms yeah. and like, you know, Posture's not maintaining hor- wrong. Yeah, horrible yeah. posture, not maintaining the right form like that. Like you can even do triple the amount of weight possibly that you should be doing properly. But that's not, that's again, like circling back to the fact, those two years, I really, really realized the importance of listening to your body, understanding and even reading a lot about uh, the science behind it, like what is important, what you should feel, how you should feel, how should you target recovery? Uh, What is the ideal uh workout for me what is the ideal intensity of the workout for me what kind of a workout do I enjoy these are a lot of things that just don't happen overnight and once you try it's again like you know going to a buffet you try out different uh things like just pick and choose out of different aspects and then you identify what you like where you're getting the best results what interests you the most yeah. and target that accordingly yeah So is that, you know, have you, is that how you kind of have been deciding your regimen and schedule in general? Yeah, so uh, you brought up a, uh, a, your like muscle confusion. Yeah, Uh, surprising it. Yeah, so exactly, it's uh, like shock, shock effect. Yeah. And you read about the fact that uh, your muscle is, again, like, uh, like any other body part. The more used to a certain movement it gets, the easier it gets. And then a lot of people end up thinking that, oh, this means that now I'm, I'm getting greater. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But that is basically your body just getting used to a certain kind of movement or a certain kind of weight. So you're not challenging it anymore. And it's it's only going to grow your muscle to that extent. Exactly. You I, I, imagine if things. your mathematics teacher in high school was like, great, you know how to add, now go out into the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know everything now. Yeah. So that's the entire thing. You're supposed to add, once you know that, all right, I can handle a certain weight or I can handle a certain exercise move on don't let your body get used to it really shock your the muscle your body and uh, there's a reason why these stereotypical sayings exist right like no pain no gain yeah like pain a lot of people end up telling me that oh I absolutely detest the pain and this and that obviously no one likes pain to begin with but when you realize the satisfaction that you actually get when you go into the gym and like we were discussing doing chest one day in the gym that you know all right today is a chest day and I'm absolutely going to crush it and you do your workout and then not only the next morning within the eve by the evening itself like you can feel uh, that muscle group aching yeah. then you know that all right i have taxed that part of my body and i am i mean it, it's kind of weird calling pain a reward but i am getting the mental satisfaction of knowing that i did my job right in the gym i mean for a lot of people and i think you and i have also discussed is that pain is kind of enjoyable like yeah, the dorms, which is delayed onset again, it's, of it's about, soreness i think it's about tricking your mind into realizing it's a, a, it's i guess there are those experiments in uh, psychology and psychiatry as well right it's about uh, like stimulus it's yeah. about tricking your body into realizing that this is something that is good and once you feel that feeling it means that you've done the job right 
Absolutely, man. And um, that's 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 one of the indicators that tells you that you know you have pushed your body, yeah. you have challenged it, and that you are going to see results as a because of it. So yeah. So one aspect, like how you were explaining about my uh, asking about my workout, was so this is the first aspect: of the fluidity and the dynamism of it, and also challenging yourself continuously. Now, circling back into the thing of not only challenging yourself within the same, we were just discussing weightlifting, but. A lot of times, like we were discussing, we have discussed also in the past that uh, sometimes you just don't want to lift. Yeah, you you just feel like, oh man, today's a day I can't even think about doing a tenth of what I usually do. That's when the second aspect, and I think the most important aspect of fitness comes in the routine, and it's about pushing yourself and just getting yourself there, even if you can't do uh, half of the amount that you're supposed to do in a workout that you've planned if you can even do a quarter of it yeah yeah something better than nothing door. it's walking in the door yeah to a certain extent. and you'll realize eventually that if you have a fixed routine especially with regard to fitness eventually your body starts craving it and especially at that time the more regular you are the more uh i guess anal you are about these kinds of things yeah i you know you're supposed to eventually you have to really just be like no excuses yeah and that is the biggest mistake that a lot of people I see around me at least making. Like we all go through injuries. We all go through laziness. We all have jobs. We all have our own lives, our own problems. Yeah. But there are people out there who do it. So why can't you? Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think the the the, the term you used in terms of actually craving it, right? You want to get to a point yeah. where you've pushed yourself hard enough, where your body is craving it, where you feel almost guilty with yourself. Yeah, I need absolutely. To do this. It's, it's, it is that guilt which eventually motivates you even further and it's a very short window yeah. that guilt eventually will turn into laziness <laughs> yeah so and then there's no going back for another month then again it's like starting from scratch yeah then that's it's the about worst, retraining yourself yeah worst. of course and that's that slump that people talk about right that oh i haven't gone to the gym in three months yeah why you're not injured you're not just doing anything. lazy man yeah, yeah. aside from being lazy it's also about just accepting and being okay with the fact it's uh i think it's a uh, it's also a very slippery slope it's it's where you just feel that you're comfortable. Yeah. It's not about comfort at the end of the day. Isn't life about challenging yourself? Yeah, absolutely. If Every you're just aspect. doing the same thing day in and day out, why aren't you happy just being an analyst for the rest of your life? Yeah. You push yourself in moving forward in your career. You push yourself moving forward in a relationship. In emotional... Same should apply. Exactly. Yeah. With yeah, friendships, yeah, everything. It's a dynamic process. And you have to not only... As the process changes, yeah. you have to change with it. So speaking about dynamic process, you know, this is um, something that we discussed with, um, you know, all of our guests and obviously all of the experts as well. You know, what what is, you know, the definition of a goal for you? You know, it's, is it it's something that's obviously moving because, you know, you've now been doing it for five years. Yep. Um, how do you decide what the short term and long term goal is and what are you personally working towards? Um, you know, what is it? You know, I, I think it's a very broad question where what is this fitness journey mean for you and where do you think you're taking it right i mean look uh it isn't my uh like it isn't my career right yeah absolutely it's just something i do as a hobby so yeah my goal i would say it's a two-pronged approach every year i would say let yeah actually let's put it that way i do think about it now on a yearly basis so as an example when i started off the first year, your goal has to be obviously more general. Yeah. Because as we discussed earlier getting in the episode, it, yeah. exactly, you're not only getting into the process of becoming fitter or healthier, it's also about training yourself and understanding, like we discussed, what you feel will work for you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, blah. yeah, yeah. Basics of fitness. But basics once of you get the basics, then you should set more. It's uh, like a business principle called smart yeah. goals, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've yeah. discussed that also. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. you have to go through like small, measurable, attainable, realistic, and yeah. timely goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these are goals, again, like the most important thing which I do for myself is I don't set unrealistic goals. Because it's so easy today in the Instagram age and the Snapchat age. Yeah, to eight pack bhi chahiye. Exactly. exactly. Bhi Six pack to ab 90s ki baat hai. <laughs> <laughs> you know, eight now it's like, kitne nas nikal rahe hain, kahan se nikal rahe hain, kahan hai. So, you know, it's very easy to get flustered and to get demotivated, especially when you see people around you who do look like yeah. that sometimes. And man, if you go here, luckily we're not surrounded by so many fit people on a yeah. regular basis. It's getting there though. It's it is. Like, there. I'm amazed actually at yeah. how fitness in the past five years only within India has picked up a massive deal. 
but if you go to the west like we like we studied and worked there yeah. my god i would say the first reason why i stopped going to the gym when i was in college in america Sim- was intimidating right? yeah because i i was benching 10 kilos and the dude next to me is benching 200 yeah. and he looks at you like hey need some help buddy and you're like, <laughs> you're like, like uh, never coming back here yeah. <laughs> so it's important not to take yourself too seriously yeah. Yeah. and the whole point is again setting goals where you're like okay if i want to lose weight what does that mean yeah. uh quantify I, it also yeah then people just also again be specific like they say i want to lose 5 kilos 5 yeah. kilos of what like are you losing general mass are you losing, losing muscle are you, are you losing yeah. fat yeah. like yeah. when people follow these stupid diets where they're just not eating yeah Okay fine you might lose the weight but then again that's a short term result. Yep. The moment you start eating your regular diet you you're probably going to com- get yeah. the fat back on and a little more. Yeah. Because your electrolyte balance is off whack, your insulin levels are completely in shock, your uh, general metabolism is way slower. Yeah. your energy levels are probably horrible and that's probably why also then you don't feel great when you're on that diet yeah you But went on the diet so you could feel good about yourself and ex- feel like shit after exactly losing exactly when you so. look good and you're like all right i've achieved i've achieved my goal then you go back to your previous old bad habits yeah. and you're back at square one if yeah, not worse it's systemic change exactly so the goals again have to be small and measurable and they have to be something always throw in a goal that you can see because seeing is believing right yeah. you have to set a goal also as part of your overall goal which is something which you can see and that is attainable yeah like all right i want to there's a reason why they also do it right like when you get serious about lifting uh, you measure a certain parts of your body yeah. like uh, i know there's some guy chuckling in the background <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> yeah. what so, are you using to measure yeah exactly <laughs> so like well, a stick or what <laughs> So, <laughs> anyway yeah moving on yeah so it's about that's how you keep track like weight is such a generalized measurement i feel like go and get a body mass index done yeah. uh, see your fat percentage, percentage absolutely see, see get a blood test factors, done yeah. and see like whether your cholesterol is high these are actual aspects of health and fitness which are important and will contribute to your life yeah. not just a number like what are you going to gain if you are skinny as hell and you're unhealthy is that better? or is, uh, is it like you being 5 kilos heavier and actually healthy yeah so it, it can show on your face also you see i'm sure we've all seen those people who look skinny as hell all of a sudden they've lost all this weight and they look horrible it's because they haven't attained that weight or they're not supposed to be at that, that weight and yeah. it's not the it's right not process it's not happen naturally yeah, yeah. Uh, so then aside from these uh, visual goals and small goals also i I'd, uh, i'd like to point out at least for me there are goals which i set on a smaller time frame yeah uh for example i really really detested when i started uh, lifting properly i hated doing chest which i think you are yeah, at yeah. right now <laughs> <laughs> so the whole point is pushing yourself and being like no way i don't care if i'm going to do it i Johnny, want yeah, yeah you're yeah. like man i lift uh, 20 kilos on bench right now next month i don't care how it's going to be at least 30 35 yeah. so pushing yourself to that point and when you hit that level then you realize that again more than a physical game it's a mental, mental game. game absolutely and it's all about pushing yourself to attain these goals and obviously if you put an unrealistic goal circling back at it that oh i'm going to i'll right now bench 20 kilos in a uh, in a month i'm going to do 100 yeah if you do it fantastic you're you're a freak <laughs> but, <laughs> or but like, that's probably not natural yeah exactly <laughs> or, or not natty yeah exactly so it's or either that yeah. or you're going to injure yourself yeah. or you're going to get to the point obviously your body also needs recovery your body needs that time so it's it all circles back to the fact of being in tune with your body and hearing the signals yeah. being which, able to listen to it exactly awesome so let's talk a little bit about the nu- nutrition aspect of your wellness right yeah. um, you know you're very passionate about um cooking the yeah, some of the food cooking. that you yeah consume and um, you know a lot about the ingredients that are going in your food right yeah. we've talked a lot about that at length um, together um so tell our audience a little bit about you know how you obviously identify the ingredients um and how you go about kind of working that into your fitness goals and your wellness goals cool um so yeah like 90% uh, of fitness is your diet right and again when i say diet i don't mean not eating 
which is a major major misconception yeah, that's why we try to just have. refer to it as nutrition here yeah, yeah. I, i would say meal plan yeah like uh, what is your uh, general eating strategy yeah so the whole point is uh, you have to also understand it's with regard to food first of all i love food i am the biggest foodie out there like even i love grease and cheese and butter and everything who doesn't yeah <laughs> but the fact of the matter is you can't be healthy if you yeah. just eat that Keep consuming only that yeah and we there are so many things which we don't realize that we consume on a daily basis that where we say oh it's just this much sugar oh it's just that much salt but all of that compounds and yeah. eventually gets into your It system adds up. and we don't know where our food's coming from it's all about tracking the ingredients yeah, that is a major aspect and this is something that i actually learned because of my roommate in america in college he made me see this movie called food inc and it changed my life yeah. like i haven't had you've seen when have you yeah. ever seen me have a coca cola never and uh since 2009 so that's 10 years i've bear yes i have had the occasional coke or an aerated beverage here and there but you'll never see me drinking that as a staple yeah i'll only drink it if i'm intensely hungover and <laughs> I, there's no other option available if there's a juice i'll definitely go for that not even because of the fitness aspect because i prefer it yeah and just small amounts of things like this it's about understanding where your food comes from what the ingredients are and really caring about it because if you're putting that much effort in getting fit yeah it's all going to this waste this is a huge catalyst it, that is yeah. not i won't even call it a catalyst that's the building block yeah, the that's your foundation the catalyst. yeah the yeah. fitness actually that's a yeah. great metaphor yeah. the foundation of your fitness is your diet and what you eat and the catalyst which gives you the benefit of what you're eating is your fitness, is your fitness. Yeah. and that's when you get to see results if either or is missing you don't see the results and that's why people are like man i'm putting 2 hours in the gym and i've only lost this much yeah. because you're still eating that butter chicken and naan every day yeah. you're still hitting the buffet and not giving a shit about what you're eating yeah. and now circling back on onto the point of what you're eating it's not just i i see so many people doing this uh oh i'm just having a caesar salad so i'm healthy no a caesar salad <laughs> yeah, is freaking mayonnaise is really bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's horrible like it's so bad for you you my i kid you not there are some versions of a paratha out there that are probably better but <laughs> yeah. yeah so Uh, because again like something as simple as a paratha people think that oh there's only one kind of a paratha no, no there's bread pick, there's yeah, so many yeah, different kinds of wheat flour uh, now there there's endless options with this entire vegan craze going on you can vegan and gluten free yeah get, gluten free uh, vegan there are tons of options out there which you can actually explore and luckily we're in a country like india where there's a huge emphasis on vegetarianism yeah and your fiance included Absolutely. is a living and breathing example of that and the whole point is understanding that just because it's it fits into that box it doesn't mean that it's healthy yeah you have to understand what ingredients go behind it and that's where i used to find it very irritating when i some of my friends used to be like oh how is this cooked how is it made what oil do you use is there any salt yeah, maybe asking is there any salt is a bit too far yeah. but definitely now i am a person who if i am even you traveling want to know, of course i'm curious not only from the fitness aspect but also because i'm passionate about cooking and it all comes down to the fact i didn't i wasn't born knowing how to cook actually the 8 years that i wasn't here and i lived by myself i barely even cooked yeah i cooked the basic things like okay a sandwich here and there or a salad or whatever i wasn't involved in cooking on a regular basis but then i slowly and slowly got into it and obviously like when these are things i would recommend actually maybe you do either read about it or you get a trainer who does specialize in nutrition and explains the basics to you about macronutrients yeah so that is again something like it varies according to your goal yeah uh if you want to build muscle you have to increase your protein yep. intake if you want to purely cut down on carbs or you want to slim down uh sorry you want to cut down on uh, your weight then it's carbs then it's carbs yeah if you want to reduce the water retention in your body it's salt yeah if you want or even sodium sodium for example is such a major killer out it, there yeah and it's in so many it's things it's everything yeah. i i guarantee you you go out into the market today actually in india our labeling standards standards aren't as high as in the west yeah. but if you see the next time you're in the west i dare you to go into a supermarket and actually read through the ingredients and 
uh, there's a handful of product and i'm not talking about going to into a trader joe's yeah. or some fancy vegan place walmart go, go into walmart. a walmart yeah. and go into the regular food section and try getting something that doesn't have hfc which is high fructose corn syrup yeah. or corn starch yeah it's, it's virtually it's impossible everywhere. like duracell batteries have them in that in them also somehow like in a small concentration it's really What? weird yeah like uh, there's this uh, study that they actually did in the movie food inc where they put a guy uh, he's wearing a blindfold and they shoo him off into an aisle in a supermarket to like pick out 10 things and out of the 10 things that he randomly picks out nine have hfc wow and it's so bad for you it's worse than sugar and we just consume it in everything so you know that's i think even with the fitness point you were saying that you know it's something that you have to take an interest in and experiment with the same thing with the food you know get passionate about it understand the ingredients and what it does to your body right? yeah um so before we move into the last segment man i know you're super passionate about di- uh, about diving and traveling um you know just before we kind of uh, wrap this up i'd love to hear about how your wellness regimen has um, you know kind of contributed to all the other things that you're passionate about outside of work and um, you know your workout in general how is that affected diving or you know travel in general well in every possible way <laughs> i mean yeah. it's life changing as much as corny as it sounds yeah. it's a fact uh like i was a person 7 to 8 years ago if you asked me to walk 5 to 6 kilometers outside in the heat i would probably be drenched in sweat and i'd i'd be it'd be game over for me yeah. and i'd probably be cranky and really angry and I I probably order a pizza immediately after. <laughs> AC so, Coke pizza. Yeah, <laughs> a- exactly. The the holy trinity of obesity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what I really uh saw happening and again it's a cyclical process. Uh I traveled I always loved traveling but I was more of a sedentary traveler earlier. Yeah. Before I really became fitter. and uh, more conscious about my health, more serious about my health. I was a person who would also like room service sitting in a hotel going out for like 2 3 hours when it's not hot and then, then coming back, back yeah. and then that's it like you know maybe going out for dinner here and there and then going to a club and having a few drinks and that's about it that's my idea of traveling at that particular point but as i started becoming more conscious about my fitness and confident about my own body i started pursuing sports which were fitness driven as yeah. well for example diving a lot of people don't realize the physical toll it takes on you because obviously if you go for a the pressure underwater yeah consistently increases with the increase in your depth yeah and i luckily got my deep dive certification 2 years ago and when you're about 127 feet underwater the size of your lungs is a quarter of what they usually are at sea level if yeah. not smaller so their capacity needs to be really good exactly so your lung and i'm a smoker I'm going to be 100% honest. There yeah. are people who think that oh you can't be fit without if you are doing this my parents included. Yeah. All people from that generation. No, I'm I'm not a chain smoker. I enjoy smoking cigarettes when I'm having a few drinks, but beyond that barely my one cigarette in the morning. That's yeah. about it. Yeah. Aside from that, no, but that also I reduced the amount that I smoked because I started diving. And I noticed that if I smoke a certain amount or if I smoke a lot the next day I make sure that I do cardiovascular activity. Yeah, it's again that back up. Exactly. It's about understanding your body. I make sure because I can feel uh, the change in my lungs. I can feel myself wheezing a bit, I guess. I can feel that cough coming up. I can feel uh like you know a lower just a lower breaths for exa- uh, like a shorter breath instead of a full deep breath. And that's again something which in diving is very important yeah. because the calmer that you are you've done the discover scuba Absolutely, now yeah. the calmer you are the longer your dive will be because the less oxygen you consume the calmer you are with re- uh, and that's also more of a body thing you can't if your body freaks out your mind will freak out yeah. so i just came back from a trip also where i walked more than 700 kilometers in 5 wow. weeks wow and if you ask me to do something like that 5 years ago impossible Oh, it's also about the process right it's that uh, slope which you have to convince yourself to get over yeah. and that's 
it, it ends up contributing in such an amazing and positive way to your own experience. Like if I didn't walk that amount that I did while I was at my trip, I wouldn't have seen half the things that I did. Yeah, man. So moving into our last segment, um, you know, thank you for the um, great information and great, uh, you know, in, insight into your fitness journey and your nutrition journey so far. And um, so the last segment is a little bit about, um, you know, uh, kind of wrapping things up and summarizing them. But uh, who would you like to potentially hear on our on our podcast? I'd like to hear more stories of people, regular people who enthusiasts. Exactly. Yeah. More people who involve fitness on a daily basis, who have real lives, not uh, the, the you know, like the eight pack gym freak yeah. that we all yeah. see on Instagram. I don't think any of our guests have been that though. Yeah, but, but uh, yeah. N- let me rephrase this. I want to hear more people who pursue fitness because of their love for fitness, not because it's adding monetary or any other incentive so something that's not necessarily professional a career yeah. exactly it's not even remotely involved in a uh, from a career aspect with them uh, what i really find inspirational is how there are people out there who have luckily i run my own business so i do have the flexibility and sometimes i end up thinking would i be this f- uh, involved in fitness or would so i, I be this be passionate nine to eight. if i had a 9 yeah. to 8 job and let's be honest in india we don't There's have 9 no to 5 such thing as nine to we five. don't have 9 to 5 yeah. so when i wake up in the morning at 7:30 and would i cook then i end up thinking about these things which i haven't luckily or uh, I haven't been put in that position where I need to determine that for myself. Yeah, yeah. But I want to at least have that in my arsenal. And I want to hear about people who do have those lives and still somehow motivate themselves to get up in the morning, cook for themselves, go do their jobs, come back in the evening, hit the gym and still go out. Yeah. I want to know how their energy levels, what is something, that, because they're definitely doing something which is making that possible for them. Absolutely. And that's what I really want to know. And I also would be really interested in hearing out some people who are doing some, like, you know, the if someone runs an Ironman. Because these are now endurance-based sports are really are coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we do have some guests. So I think you will be uh, pleasantly surprised with some of the people that are coming up. And hopefully you get a chance to listen to those guys as well. Awesome. Um, what are three sources of information that you have loved um, in the last six months? They could be books. They could be blogs, other podcasts that have potentially added value to your fitness or nutrition journey or have just motivated you and inspired you in general. The three, again, uh, I'd say it's everything for me. It's just an amalgamation of everything that's around me. I just surround myself, I guess, with information that does motivate me or gives me new information which will contribute to my journey. But I'd say the three primary sources of information, one would be my online trainer, who I am in constant communication with, who I also ask questions uh, or discuss things with my goals, like how we were discussing yeah, earlier. Yeah. That would be number one. Number two would be, also I want to emphasize on one thing, the online trainer doesn't mean that he's not doing shit. Yeah, of course. (laughs) It's all about how much you capitalize on it. We all are Google masters today. You can do enough research to understand who's legit and who's not. And it's about you being involved in it. So, and it's about you taking as much out of that as you can. Yeah, absolutely. So that's one. Two, I would say Instagram. Like I legitimately, it's, Like my, that's my biggest Monday motivation. Like, you know, like this guy I've been following now for the past few weeks uh, called Bionic Man. He doesn't have any legs and he's an IFBB bodybuilder. Wow. Yeah, we were talking about him. Unbelievable. Like if there are people like that, when I feel sluggish and I'm like, oh man, I don't want to do this. I look at this guy and I'm like, get the hell up. Yeah, if he's (laughs) doing it, you should be doing it. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, Yeah. So yeah, stuff like that. And three, I would say... People around me, but not necessarily discussing it with them, looking at them, especially people who I know are involved in fitness. Like I I like discussing with them. I like talking to them. And we all do it. Like when you and I meet, I, I think it, we at least spend five minutes every at time least, that we... Minimum. Yeah. So yeah. we're always discussing what did you do today? How are you feeling about your fitness? Blah, blah. You look good. This is that. Yeah. And that is also rewarding because then not only do you get to learn more about the other person, you also get to learn about yourself through their eyes absolutely 
So yeah. And you get inspired as well, man. Yeah. I think I get a lot of inspiration from you and a lot of the other people we're fortunate to have around us that are kind of passionate about fitness and take care of themselves at least, right? Um so a couple of closing thoughts for all of our listeners sure. that may want to um you know, follow your path in terms of spending 5 years getting fit and continuing that journey. Just keep at it, get a routine. rewind it and listen to the episode again if you haven't understood anything yeah. yet <laughs> hit like and subscribe <laughs> yeah 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 um so yeah i wanted to also uh, before we head off um anywhere people can follow you and reach out to you if they're interested in learning more about you and um you know your art business or your diving or your traveling uh where should they be able to get in touch with you uh well i mean I'm most active unfortunately on Instagram. Aren't we all? <laughs> Aren't we all, brother? So I guess find find me on there. And uh, aside from that, uh my company's name is Artworm, so you can uh visit our website on projectartworm.com and you can reach out through the channels which are listed on the website over there. Otherwise, I'm sure we'll run into each other somehow here or there. Shoot out to Kabir and tell him to get in touch with me and yeah. we'll figure it out. All right, man. Thank you so much for taking the time no to worries. chat Thank with us, man. I appreciate it. All right guys, that was our episode. Thanks so much for watching or listening. We hope you gained something that helps you on your wellness journey. We have some great episodes this season which will help you deep dive into different fitness and nutrition methods. Like the one with Sonakshi Dhameja about yoga and her journey of becoming a teacher. Or the one with Neha Bedi who talks about everything you need to know about keto. Definitely remember to look out for those. If you like something from this episode, please show us some love and subscribe or follow us. We'd love for you to be a part of this process, so write to us on our social media at Mancha Podcast or comment on YouTube. Thanks for watching or listening, guys. Until next time.